What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be the spoiler free review for Scream 6. Yep, spoiler free review. Not going to have any spoilers for me until Monday. But uh, just to get into it, we know that this movie is directed by Radio Silence. It's also written by Guy Busick and James Vanderbilt. It stars Melissa Barrera. It stars Jasmine Savoy Brown, Jack Champion, Hearing Kazarian. Mason Gooding, Leon Liberato, Dermot Maroney, Devin Nakota, Jenna Ortega, Tony Revolori, Josh Segura, Samara Weaving, Hayden Pantier, Courtney Cox, and of course, Roger L. Jackson. Now, this film is continuing with the four survivors from the previous Ghostface Killing Spree in Screen 5, with our sisters leading the pack, Sam and Tara Carpenter, twins Chad and Mindy Meeks, leaving Woodsboro behind and starting a new chapter of their lives in New York City, only to again be plagued by a streak of murders by a new Ghostface Killer. Now, off the bat many of you already saw my twitter reaction scream six it is a blast from start to finish it sincerely is a never-ending ride like we were promised it would be there's never a dull moment and my biggest complaint is about my medium popcorn with no butter and a small diet pepsi because it was just not hitting tonight just to throw out a little joke about scream two as for the movie absolutely a hit more than a miss as usual i will get into the weaknesses which came in the writing department like i expected it to be but i'll work my way to that what really makes us want to step up over the fifth movie is the character development that happens with our core four which makes their deadly predicaments hit a nerve during the even more relentless chase scenes that are back and better than ever that are again featured in this movie mindy is still a lovable horror nerd who has a very positive outlook on life now despite what she went through last year tara is trying to cope with it all by being reckless in certain ways but sam's overprotective nature is here to keep her above water while sam is trying to protect her sister she herself is struggling with her own inner struggles because of what happened in five and in between the events of five there's actually some interesting new developments elements we learn between Sam Terra and their mother Christina which makes the sister bond even more important and pulls at your heartstrings a little bit because you learn how much these two need to stick together at this point. Gail is definitely struggling with Dewey's loss I think that was made very apparent but the way she's written in this new movie despite having written yet another book based on the requel events lets us know that she hasn't just completely reverted back to her less empathetic self. It's very apparent in this movie and it's highlighted more than you expected to be. It's not backtracking on her growth at all whatsoever so everyone that was concerned about that you'll run you're going to love how it's executed you're going to love it now the dialogue wasn't always that great i can't deny that because i found myself rolling my eyes more than once or cringing at the repeated use of a certain phrase or when characters felt the need to talk as if you have no idea who they are and it's like bro i get some people are going to watch this without seeing screen five but telling me who you are over and over again is not needed for me or any of the newcomers still for every weakness there is a strength because the writers know they know and they've made it more than clear that they understand what a screen five or not what a screen five but what a screen movie should be you get your meta dialogue your self-aware moments commentary on requel sequels commentary on online dating and perhaps one of the best if not the best opening sequences since scream 2 it's a completely unique opening that has never been done before and it actually includes some first time ever occurrences for this series subverting expectations would be an understatement so be prepared for scream 6 to catch you off guard if you are someone who didn't study everything that was released the writing also does fall flat when it comes to the plot conveniences and what i mean is yes this series we know is riddled with plot conveniences but six has some that are so in your face i'm sure several of you will go yeah i'm not buying that i went like that a few times but overall it wasn't a make it wasn't a complete bust for the movie a lot of unanswered questions are raised but it never again takes away from the strengths found in the writing that's there's also people that i know should be dead <laughs> i would just say that some people should be dead but i'm just gonna leave it at that never one to shy away from social commentary scream six takes aim at conspiracy theories and how damaging they can be and why someone may choose to start them and how it can of course impact somebody's life also the way this movie wants to pay respect to every sequel prior to it was such a clever way to pay homage to the sequels and what feels like the first time ever since scream one is always made to be the most important the fantastic but equally elaborate set pieces the constant callbacks mostly the scream two and scream three shout out to you ryan she sour showers because you're gonna love this and the overall journey was just like a big finally finally moment that this series is acknowledging the other sequels in a more profound way besides just doing the bare minimum kirby reed is handled with the utmost care and respect yes her presence is limited but we learn so much about her the connective tissue that is used to reference screen four is simple but effective she's not just a cameo and they make the most out of her time hayden does a great job jumping back into the role so many years later portraying a more hardened version of kirby who still loves horror movies but now has a passion to stop crying thanks to overcoming her own trauma every performance is great overall but someone 
does go completely off the rails and i was like what on earth am i witnessing because it was like watching someone malfunction literally right in front of your very eyes uh, which it literally of course was but in a completely bad way and i mean that because when it started i was like this needs to stop because this is this is really bad melissa barrera antes listen to me carefully i can recognize that jenna ortega is doing a better job but barrera is doing a decent enough job once again as sam i would say she's even stronger this time around she's very believable as his overprotective sister and how she captures the stressful nature of cam's character is done very well she excels at capturing someone who wants to break under the pressure but knows she can't because her sister needs her to stay strong Courtney Cox, an absolute legend. You are an absolute legend. Gail's chase scene did not disappoint, and I actually almost found myself in tears, I'm not going to lie, because the banter between her and Ghostface, Brian Tyler's score, swelling, uh, or just helping the, the tension swell, and Courtney's powerful delivery really pulled at my heartstrings. The camera work overall was solid. The establishing shots of the city were chef's kiss. The editing, I would say, is improved this time, and while the pacing is very rapid, it still managed to find those pockets of breathing room to let these characters mean something to you. For instance, the emotional angst that the latter scene is going to cause is not the same, nor would it have been the same if the dynamics you see prior didn't exist. Yes, the movie is very gory, and Ghostface is indeed at their most sinister level. The way Scream 6 builds tension through the sound design moments of those face lurking especially in that bodega sequence and brian tyler's chilling score just welling during all the chase sequences makes this a visceral and highly stressful experience that never lets up when it comes to the tension now balancing humor has never been a massive issue for this series and stream six excels at that too not every joke landed for me in terms of the writing department with the humor and i did find mindy annoying at times but i still love her to bits certain interactions do come off a little forced and not as natural as they probably intended to be but again those are minor issues at best as for the motive and the killers i'm indifferent and i mean it I mean, it makes sense during rewatches, but perhaps it's too obvious. The motive, I would say, though, is layered with details that tie into the social commentary aspect, but it still retains what you'd expect from a screen movie. Those who watch me know that I only love the motives of four and five, and I only like the rest, and I do like the motive in six, but it's not like a deal break or anything that has me going, oh my gosh, that was great. It was just something I found to be. Okay, that makes sense. It's acceptable. It's in line with the rest of the movies. The third act honestly is a little rushed, which is fine, but I prefer the third act here over screen five. I'm not going to lie. I also think it's not the weakest third act like I've been seeing online. I think it's a lot stronger than five and four. It's just rushed. But you guys can let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.